Corneal ulcers are one of the most painful eye conditions out there. If you've had one, you know that the pain, redness, and discomfort are truly on another level. In today's video, I'll teach you all about corneal ulcers, their causes, and their treatment. Plus, I'll give you some tips to avoid getting one at all. If you're watching this video because you think you have one, make sure to see your eye doctor, as corneal ulcers can badly damage your vision, even causing blindness. Welcome to Eye School with Dr. D, where my goal is to arm you with the knowledge you need to take control of your eye health and have the best vision possible. Like and subscribe for videos every week. You've made it to Eye School with me, Dr. D. Welcome, make yourself comfy, and get ready to learn about keratitis or corneal ulcers. Oh, fries. Mm. Before we get started, this channel is all about education, and I love creating this community of pupils. If you have a friend or relative this information could help, this video is easily shared right here from YouTube. Corneal ulcers or keratitis can be simply explained as being an open sore on the front covering or cornea of the eye. They can be infected, but in some cases are not actually infected with any bacterial, viral, fungal pathogen, but are due to dry eye or neurotrophic corneas. So corneal ulcers present typically in one eye with a red, painful, or sore eye. Vision can be decreased and discharge might be noted. Yellow, white, even a greenish discharge could be kind of drying on the eyelids. You could also note excessive tearing, the feeling like something's in your eye, light sensitivity, and even a swollen eyelid. Sometimes it's even possible to view a corneal ulcer without the use of specialized equipment. In this case, you might be able to see a white spot on your cornea when looking in the mirror. So there are certain things that put you at risk for having a corneal ulcer, wearing contact lenses, especially if you overwear them or sleep in them. A past history of shingles, chicken pox, or cold sores can put you at risk for viral ulcers, um, a history of dry eye disease or neurotrophic keratitis, a history even recently of trauma, like a scratch on the cornea from a tree branch or anything at all. Recent history of a corneal burn, those that use steroid eye drops sort of on their own at home, um, even having a poorly functioning eyelid, typically due to surgery, but it could be due to like a Bell's palsy. All of those things are risk factors for developing a corneal ulcer. So if you have some of those symptoms or you have some of that history, maybe you slept in your contacts last night and your eyes now feeling red, watery, you've got some discharge, here's when you should see a doctor. I do recommend seeing your eye doctor if you're having pain and redness at any level in your eyes. In general, I use a little acronym RSVP. So you should see your doctor if you have redness, sensitivity to light, vision loss, or pain. In addition, even once you've undergone treatment, I really love that same RSVP rule because I tell my patients, once you start treatment, your RSVP should be getting better, not worse. In other words, redness, sensitivity to light, vision changes and pain should all be getting better, not worse throughout your treatment. There are exceptions to this and your doctor will guide you. There are some eye conditions that sort of get worse before they get better, but in general that RSVP should be getting better, not worse. And if it's not, then you should report that to your eye doctor. Corneal ulcers can get worse quite quickly without treatment. So it's critical not to wait thinking that this is just going to get better on its own. A few years back, I had a patient who slept in contacts overnight on Thanksgiving day, woke up with a red painful eye. That of course is a Thursday here in the US Thanksgiving. And by Monday, when I saw that ulcer, it was so widespread that patient end up, ended up getting a corneal transplant months down the line. So if you are having symptoms like this, I definitely would urge you to see your eye doctor. So let's talk about some types of keratitis or corneal ulcers. The first type is fungal. So you can actually get a fungal ulcer. Um, quite a few years back now, uh, there was a, a popular contact lens solution that was recalled because patients were getting fungal ulcers. So this can be, fungal ulcers can come from contact lens usage, poor cleaning of your case, but it can also be from a scrape or an abrasion with organic or plant material. 
These also happen pretty commonly in people who use steroids because the use of topical steroids um, can exacerbate fungal microorganisms. They tend to really take off and grow faster if you're using a steroid. The second type is a bacterial ulcer really, really common in contact lens wearers, especially if you're wearing those contacts overnight, sleeping in them, or improperly caring for them. Whether that's, you know, using the incorrect type of solution, like using water instead of a multi-purpose disinfectant, making your own type of contact lens solution. Um, I have really heard it all, but improperly caring for contacts does put you at risk. In addition, older technology lenses are less breathable, and I've seen this cause ulcers. That's usually coupled with not caring for your contact lenses correctly as well. The third type is a viral ulcer. Those can be caused by herpes simplex, the virus that causes cold sores, or even herpes zoster, the shingles and chickenpox virus. Another less common type of corneal um, ulcer but very devastating is that from a parasitic infection like acanth amoeba. So acanth amoeba are these microscopic amoebas that live in fresh water and these are especially problematic in contact lens wearers. This is a difficult infection to both diagnose and treat and if you've ever had an acanth amoeba infection they tend to drag on quite a while while we're trying to treat them. And then we have neurotrophic ulcers, dry eye, loss of sensation in your cornea can cause a neurotrophic ulcer where the cornea actually breaks down. This is a later stage type of neurotrophic keratopathy, which I've talked about in other videos in the past that I'll link up above. This is not an infectious ulcer and it does behave somewhat differently than other corneal ulcers. So in order to diagnose your um, ulcer, your doctor will use a slit lamp to observe your cornea. An experienced optometrist or ophthalmologist can determine the depth of your ulcer and confirm the diagnosis using a special dye called fluorescein. This is a good time to tell you that um, I do recommend, if you're concerned specifically about having a corneal ulcer, I would recommend seeing an eye care professional of your choosing, optometrist, ophthalmologist, but somebody that has slit lamps um, or the equipment that we use to look at the cornea. Oftentimes, urgent cares and emergency rooms are not equipped with slit lamps, and so they don't just have the equipment that's needed. You would end up being, um, they would have to call the doctor on call. You're gonna end up in an eye doctor's office anyway, so if you're thinking you have a corneal ulcer, I would call your doctor first and see if they have on-call hours and can see you. If we're concerned about an infectious cause for an ulcer, we can actually take a corneal tissue sample and culture it and find out what is growing on your cornea. Once we figure out the, the pathogen and confirm that it's an ulcer, we get to treatment. And the treatment for corneal ulcers are antibiotics, antifungals, or antiviral eye drops are going to be our treatments of choice. Sometimes your eye care professional will also prescribe antifungal tablets. In other cases, they'll actually have to treat you with an injection of medication near the eye. I've seen a lot of patients that end up having to have compounded antibiotics. That's very common in more severe corneal infections. Um, but sometimes you can get the readily available type of antibiotics from the pharmacy and those work just fine as well. So your eye care provider may prescribe a steroid or an anti-inflammatory eye drops after the infection has improved and that's because steroids do help reduce swelling and prevent scarring of your cornea. Steroid eye drop use is controversial for corneal ulcer and you should only ever use them under the close supervision of your optometrist or ophthalmologist. It is possible that steroid eye drops will worsen an infection. And certainly early on, you never ever put a steroid on an ulcer um, because it makes so many of these infections worse. You really wanna rely on your eye care provider to let you know when it's safe to use that steroid to lessen the scarring. Eye care professionals sometimes also will prescribe pain medication to take by mouth to reduce the pain. I don't often do that, but it is definitely a possibility. If your symptoms are suddenly changing or getting worse during treatment, you have to let your eye care provider know right away. Because in severe cases, corneal transplants are used to regain the vision when the cornea is scarred or otherwise compromised by the ulcer. So I have some tips for you to avoid getting an ulcer. My number one tip is do not sleep in contact lenses ever. 
that greatly increases your risk of developing a corneal ulcer. The second is to only wear the lenses prescribed by your eye doctor. I've made videos before talking about the lenses that I like, and you have to realize I'm an eye doctor, I see patients every day, I want your corneas to stay healthy. Um, there are a lot of color lenses on the market, there's a lot of old technology being marketed as um, just being marketed to patients directly, and I really like you to stay in the lenses prescribed by your eye doctor because eye doctors are prescribing you the most breathable lenses, the lenses that are least likely to cause an issue like this, and at the end of the day, to me it's worth it to wear the newer technology and not have an issue with an ulcer. I also would recommend that you follow all wear and care guidelines that your eye doctor gives you. We have a lot of experience with these things, we see a lot of ulcers, and we're just trying to protect your eyes and keep you healthy and safe. That is it for today's eye school lesson. I've got a fun fact for you today, and the fun fact is there are non-infectious corneal ulcers. They're not all infectious. That's it for today. I'll see you next time. Class is dismissed.